you were just an amateur and then you decided to go commercial? When I retired, I went commercial. Mm -hmm. I retired in 1988 when I was 50, now I'm 71. Yeah. And I worked like a young guy you now. I, I was out in that hot sun all day yesterday working bees. I bet I lost three pounds. <laughs> yeah. So why should people do this? Why is Number it one, one third of everything you eat is dependent on pollination by the bees. One third, all over the world. All over the world. That's and a the, lot. That's a lot. And the other thing is, you're healthier. Not mm -hmm. only is the bee venom healthy, propolis you can make keeps your cholesterol, charge your mm -hmm. immune system. Uh, the bee pollen, you, your body can live on it by itself mm -hmm. uh, with water and you'd be a healthy son of a gun. Of course, you would want to just eat that. Now, bees are dying, we've heard. Uh, in New Mexico, we have not had colony collapse. Okay. We're fine. But, yeah, they are. 27 states, they've lost a lot of the bees. I've heard that in some parts of the world, they have to hand pollinate. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let me smoke them down a little, and then I'll get one of these and let you look at it. Beautiful honeycomb. Look at that beautiful honey. Is that gorgeous or is that beautiful? It is beautiful. Look how pretty that is. So if I wanted to start a beehive in my backyard, I would come to you. Uh -huh. And I would say, Ken, I want to start a little beehive. Uh -huh. And how much would it cost me initially? Well, initially, to get what you need, the hat, the veil, the smoker, these are expensive, uh -huh. everything, about 300 bucks. Uh -huh. And then I would buy, you would... Well, that would include the bees. Oh, okay. And so I would come, like, with a, a truck and I could... I at night, just, you have to haul them at night. I, and they're contained in that box, and I would take that box to my yeah, house. Exactly. And so what kind of environment would I have to prepare at my house? Just where nobody's going to be in front of them. Okay. Yeah. Do they need to be near water? Oh, you have to have water. Yeah, that's a consideration. This year has been a nightmare for me because normally I supply 50, 60 hives. Mm -hmm. I've got orders for 180 of them. Really? So yeah. you have to reserve these in way in advance. Yeah, exactly. And, and this Russian bee does really well in New Mexico? Yeah, it does well anywhere because they're resistant to the mites. They just mm -hmm. chomp them with their mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, we used all kind of low-grade pesticides and things that we didn't want to put in the hive because if we didn't, we'd have, they'd have killed them all. One year I lost 70, the first year it hit New Mexico, I lost 75% of my beehives wow. to the mites. Wow. And that's when I did decide to do something about it. I read about this guy in California, called him, and went out and started using his bees. So uh, how far away from the hive do the bees go to find uh, pollen? They can go up to 12 miles. They wow. like to work in a half mile, one mile radius. But they can fly up to, uh, they'll go up to 12 miles. And they fly 18 miles an hour. Wow. They have two sets of wings. They can move them 11,000 times a minute. It's 183 times a second. So, so what's the, uh, what would be the predator for the bee now, or disease? Uh, some birds, uh -huh. of course, all types of diseases. American European fowl brood, that's a bacterial disease. Um, the big predator is the bear. Uh -huh. you know, and you it, don't have any here, right? No, thank goodness. And yeah. so uh, what about family pets? I have dogs. Can I have bees when I have dogs? I have yeah. horses. Yeah, you can because dogs are smarter than humans. And I'll tell you why. They go around the hive and get stung once. They, they are never going back okay. again, okay? Uh -huh. Humans don't do that. Okay. They go back for, they're glutton for punishment, uh -huh. right? So that's how that works. And what about horses and sheep and stuff? They don't bother. No problem. Yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. Wow. And of course, if you're a farmer and have a garden, you've got to have bees you, to you pollinate. Do. Think about uh, things like blackberries, which I have. Mm -hmm. uh, all my uh, squash, cucumbers, watermelons, cantaloupes, all that is 100% dependent on pollination by the bees. So, you got Okay, I want to order my beehive for next spring, okay? Put we me on the list. <laughs> you call me in uh, November and I'll put you on the list. Okay. But the thing that I almost require, I do a free seminar. You have to do two things and promise me you'll do two things. Okay. Get books and read, 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 read. Okay. So you have a firm understanding. And then come to the seminar, and it's an all-day potluck. If you're a good cook, that's that much better. Okay. okay, we have a big blowout. And we do 
I'll, I'll have 50 beehives here, and you'll have to work the bees. I see. And you so open a hive. Ken, if people would become backyard beekeepers, how would that help the environment? How would oh, that help? Oh, incredible. Number one, your flowers and all your gardens and your trees would be so much better because it would be naturally pollinated. And then you would be healthier because you could feed yourself pollen. You could make propolis if you had the time. You would eat honey instead of that nasty white sugar. Honey is super healthy for you. You'd be a healthier person. And it's a wonderful hobby. You know, all my kids made A's in science. You know, because I'd get a little beehive and, and I'd can a little routine for them because I do a lot of lectures and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'd make it for them and they'd go to school and the teacher would just be overwhelmed. They'd get an A+. Plus. <laughs> So if just one person at a time would do a little beekeeping, oh, yeah. this would be huge for the world, oh, would it not? Oh, exactly, yeah. Yeah, it would.